All right, hello everyone. Uh, I'm Mark Hancha, the founder and CEO here at Atlas Motor Vehicles. And it, one of our core values here is transparency. And what that means is we talk about some of the things that happen, some of the decisions that we make and why those decisions occur. But today, very specifically, we're gonna talk about thermal events that occur with battery cells. Here at Atlas Motor Vehicles, we believe in talking about it, talking about the causes, and talking about preventative measures and everything else that sort of comes with that. So at Atlas, over the last week, we had a thermal event in our validation and test with one of our cells that was going through testing. And I think it's important that we talk about that. And I think it's important that we talk about the cell technology and why that happens and what we're doing from a validation, manufacturing, and safety perspective. So I'm gonna hand it over to Lee Wen, uh, who's gonna talk about the cell technology and the causes of such an event. Thank you, Mark. Good morning, this is Lee Wen. I'm the director of Bench Cell Engineer at Atlas. So in my mind, what makes Atlas cell different is its special cell design. We know that for the general cell design, the electron need to transport a long distance because this reason it generate a hard impedance so the ohmic heat is very high because this reason fast charging will become very difficult for, but for every cell we have a special this cap design so we make sure that the electron just transport transport a relatively short distance so after long-term cycling, the whole cell still have a relatively homogeneous, lower temperature, and the temperature distribution is relatively uniform, and also generate less heat. Overall, the whole cell, the temperature is relatively uniform. Because this reason, our cell can have very good fast charging properties, and we know that our cell is packed more than several hundred layers because this reason we can make good use of all the free space inside the cells so the cell energy density also is very high in the future the pack level we will have very advanced this kind of bms system cooling system this can make sure that our battery pack can still have very good fast charging properties and safety is not a problem you know Currently, we are doing some research and develop related work so that we can develop even a high level better uh, battery technology. During this process, it's unavoidable that some of the manufacturing defects or the design flaws will happen. Because this reason, during the cell testing, it will generate some heat. Why this heat? will damage the SCR layer on the surface of anode and because of this reason more and more heat will be generated and electrolyte decomposition also will happen. As I mentioned we are in the ID level for some of the new battery technology. Personally I think it's very normal. I think my colleague David will talk more about the, the safety issues regarding our employees. So my name is David Apps. I'm new here at Atlas. I'm the VP of Operations. So the one thing I do want to point out, uh, Mark didn't mention, we didn't actually injure anybody, um, and there wasn't any property damage when this occurred in our test bed. Uh, when you think about managing safety risk, obviously employee safety is paramount. And you think about the controls that you put in place from elimination of the hazard all the way down to personal protective equipment. So the fact that we didn't have an injury or property damage tells you that our systems worked. Our controls were in place and they worked reasonably effectively. Again, we can always do better. So the one thing we're looking at right now is a more predictive measure, as Lee Wen had mentioned, understanding the temperature monitoring of the cell so that we can predict and shut the cell down before it turns into a runaway event. Once it's a runaway, it becomes obviously a bit of a concern. And then the second thing in responding or reacting to that runaway event is ensuring that we've got our proper procedures equipment and the facility is set up so that people know how to handle that situation should it occur. And that's, those are the two priorities we're working on right now, continuing to develop and improve that process so that as we continue to ramp up and test more cells, we have 
good control of this situation going forward. I think it's important to note that everything that we learned from the engineering development side to the safety side and the precautions and predictability, that all of this information in our, is things that we're going to actually apply to the end product. So this all goes into our battery cell engineering and development processes, new products that have come out over the next several years. It goes into our vehicle uh, engineering and development processes so we can understand how we build a much safer, um, much higher quality vehicle for our end customers because safety is key for us. It's a very important aspect of this particular industry, but it's important as a, a sort of theme here at Atlas Motor Vehicles. And everything that happens here is a learning exercise for us. We, we have protocols in place. We'll continue to make those better. We understand where failures occur at the cell level. We'll continue to make that better. And of course, all of this goes into the end product, whether it's a, a cell, a pack, the XP platform, or the XT pickup truck. So I think uh, that's gonna be our update for today. Uh, we'll continue to share more updates as some of these things occur, um, but it's important to remember, stuff like this happens in the development process. We learn from it, we fix it, we keep moving forward.